Amen. Hebrews 2 and 9. If you're there, say amen. amen. The Word of God says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, I want to preach this morning just a moment on, But we see Jesus. I was sitting this week reading some other scripture and thinking about what I might preach on today and the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and the Lord took me to this scripture. God said, this is what I want you to preach on today. We see Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to see Jesus one day. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but more than anything in this world, I want to see Jesus one day, don't you? I want to see this man that suffered and bled and died for me on a cross. I, I want to see the one uh, that was willing to leave glory uh, and come down where I am uh, and walk them dusty streets of Galilee and suffer and bleed and die for the wretch like me. I want to see him one day, don't you? Amen. You ought to praise the Lord a little right there. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. My, 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 my. From the beginning, from his birth, men have wanted to see him. Do you know the Bible says they were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by day. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and they were so afraid, the Bible says. But the angel said, Fear not, for there is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He said, This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And when the angel had left, they said, Come, let us go see this thing. And they went to the city of David, Bethlehem, to see Jesus. I want to see him, don't you? Amen. The Bible says there was wise men that came. And they came to see Jesus. They said to Herod, Who is he? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. What did you come for this morning? Did you come to worship him today? If you did, praise him just a little right now. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. They came where he was to see him. All through the scripture, men came to see Jesus and who he is. Amen. I read over in the word of God where a little man called Zacchaeus climbed up a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus, who he was. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to see him as he is one day. I read, yeah, praise the Lord. I read over there in the word of God how the multitude followed him everywhere he went. They wanted to see him. That's why they followed him, to see what he'd do next. I want to see him one day, don't you? Amen. Praise his holy name. But the Bible says here that the Hebrew writer says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now the Hebrew writer has said back in verse number three, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation? Then he said in verse number 6, he was talking about the angels and questioning God and how he loves mankind. And he said, one of the angels said, he quotes the psalmist, and he said, one of the angels said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou would visit him? What is it about man that you love so much? God, what is it about him that you love? Why would you send your son to die on a cross for the likes of mankind? God loves man. Amen. Amen. He loves you today, my friend. If you want to know why Christ come and died, I'll tell you in one word, love. He loves you. Amen. He loves you. He loves you like you are. He loves you when you're good, and he loves you when you're not so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, people ain't always like that. 
People will love you when you're good, and when you ain't, they'll fall out with you. But God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. Look what the Hebrew writer says here. He says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels and suffered for the suffering unto death and crowned with glory and honor. I want to tell you something here. He just said in verse 7, the Hebrew writer just said that God crowned man with glory and honor. He said that man was made a little lower than the angels. And God crowned him with glory and with honor. And he says the same thing now about Jesus. See, there's a parallel here. There is a comparison going on here. And he says, he says, you look at what this scripture says, that he crowned him with glory and honor. That's what he says back in verse 7 about Adam. He said, thou madest him a little lower than the angels and crownest him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands. So God, when he created Adam, he crowned him with glory and with honor. And he set Adam over the works of his hand. Adam was the federal head of mankind and this planet until the fall. And when Adam fell, he took mankind down with him. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl was dragged down into the sin of this world when Adam fell. We all failed. We inherited the sin nature. Well, I'll be preaching along that line tonight in tonight's message. In, we're studying the 51st Psalm on Sunday nights right now. And I want you to come pre- because you need to hear tonight's message from the 51st Psalm. But the point I want to make is God says here that he crowned Jesus with glory and honor. But that has not happened yet. I want to tell you, Jesus has wore many crowns. He wears many crowns. And the Spirit of God honed me in on that fact right there this week. The crowns that Jesus has wore. Let me tell you just a little about the crowns that Jesus wore. Do you know the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, I'm sorry, chapter 19, John says, Behold, I saw the heavens open and a white horse, and he that sitteth upon him is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge, and he makes war. And then he says he had crowns on his head, many crowns. Do you know the Lord wears many crowns? Did you know that? The first crown Jesus wore was the crown of incarnation. I'm talking about the crown of humanity. When he was incarnated into the womb of Mary and born that little babe in Bethlehem of Judea. He was not just born a baby. He was born the Savior. He was born a replacement for Adam. He was born a replacement for Adam. Your Bible tells us in in, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the first Adam failed, but the last Adam, Jesus Christ, did not fail. He is the replacement for the first Adam. The first Adam was created and placed on this earth and given a set of instructions to obey God. And he failed. You and I have failed. Can you say amen right there? We have failed to keep the commandments of God, every one of us. But the second Adam, the last Adam, did not fail. He kept the commandments of God. Jesus, the last Adam, kept the commandments of God, thus restoring the kingdom of Adam and wearing the crown as king of the human race, the crown of his incarnation. He wore that crown for 33 years. 
But then he received another crown. When they crucified him, Roman soldiers stripped him of his garments. They stripped him naked. I, I know the artist put on him a loincloth, but that's put there by the artist. Jesus Christ was stripped naked. It was a part of the shame of the cross. And Roman soldiers placed on him a scarlet purple robe. And they took a crown of thorns that they had made. And they set them on the head of Jesus. And with a reed slapped it down on his head. And the thorns cut into his head. I have seen pictures of the thorns and they look like eight penny nails. Inch and a half, two inches long. And they pierced into the scalp and the head of Jesus. And the blood poured down his face as they bowed their knees in mockery and said, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. Oh, my friend, the crown Jesus wore for you. He wore that crown for you. That crown Jesus put on for you and I today, friend. It's the crown that He wore uh, when He took our sins on the cross uh, and suffered and bled and died uh, uh, because of our sins uh, that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Can you say amen right there? Amen. It's the price He paid. Oh, what a price that was. Then there is the crown that he wore or that he will wear one day when he comes back in his glory. The Bible teaches that one day Jesus will be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. Do you know when that will happen? That will happen when the church goes home to be with Jesus. Amen. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, the church is gathered there and the celebration will begin. While all hell is breaking loose on planet earth, celebration is breaking loose in heaven. And it will culminate with the crowning of Jesus as Lord and Savior. We will crown Him King of kings and Lord of lords. I can't wait to see him wear that crown, can you? Hey, man, the Bible teaches in Revelations, the Bible says that the 24 elders take their crowns that they are given. They are representative of you and I. And they take their crowns and they lay them at the feet of Jesus. Hey, man, I've seen a picture one time of them crowns heaped up there to pile. And one of them 24 elders was down in the floor and he was scooting his crown over in the pile and looking up at Jesus. And boy, I about went into orbit when I said that. I'm telling you, I had a spell and I shouted all over the place. Hey Amen, it blessed me because one day I'll get to lay my crown at the Savior's feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise his holy name. I want to give him my crown. He's worn enough crowns for me. I want him to have the one I get. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. The Hebrew writer here says in his word, he says, now we see Jesus. Now we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. My friend, even Jesus needed God's grace to fulfill His mission. Can you say amen right there? And I want you to know today without grace, you won't make it. You'll not make it on your good deeds. You won't make it on your works. You won't make it on your church affiliation. You're not going to make it by belonging to the Moose Club and the Goose Club and all the other clubs. All of your socialities will not matter to me. Grace and mercy is the only thing that will get any of us into heaven. Amen. Praise His holy name. Grace. The Hebrew writer says here, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the 
angels for the suffering unto death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, the he being Jesus, might taste that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. God has tasted your death. The Lord took your place. He died for you. He took your heaven or your hell and gave you heaven. He took your sin and gave His righteousness. He took our wickedness and gave us His holiness. Oh, I love Him, don't you? I love Him today. There's one more crown I want to make mention of. It is the crown to the throne of your heart. Have you crowned Jesus Lord of your life? Have you crowned Him today Lord of your life? See, we've all got a throne inside of us. And for 32 years, I sat on the throne of my heart. And I made the decisions. I made the judgments and the calls. And it led to ruin. Because the wrong one was sitting on my heart. On the throne of my heart. But one day, I asked Jesus into my heart and life. And I asked Him to be the Lord of my life and the Savior, and to take His rightful place on the throne of my heart. And today He wears that crown as Lord and Savior of my life. That crown is His crown now. I've already gave Him that one. I'll give Him in heaven one day the one He gives me. I'm going to give it back to Him because worthy is the Lamb. But He's already gave, I have already gave Him the crown to my heart. And my question to you today is have you gave Jesus His rightful place in your heart? as Lord and Savior. Does He sit on the throne of your heart today? Does He rule your heart and your life? Do you call Him Lord and Savior? For now we see Jesus made a little lower than the angels for the suffering unto death crowned with honor and glory, that He, by the grace of God, might taste death for every man. I want you to see Him today as He hangs stretched forth on Calvary's cross. As the blood drips from His side and His hands. As the blood streams from His feet and from His brow. And as you look at him, hear him as he says, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. He wore the crown of thorns for you. Will you allow him to wear the crown to the throne of your heart today? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to come and accept Christ today as your Lord. Stand to your feet.